Okay, I guess we can start. Um, today, for some reason, many students are sick, so weather. It's rain. It's rain. <laughs> so anyway, pressure change. Um, so anyway, um, uh, how are you today? Survived? Monday? Hard one? Which one is harder, Wednesday or Monday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Monday. Monday. Monday, yeah. I feel the same way. Monday is harder, you know. Yeah. Wednesday is good. It's halfway, right? Yeah, okay. So, what did you guys learn last week? Do you remember? Energy balance, yeah, 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 yeah. Energy balance of the leaf, right? Yeah, so that's what you learn. And then, uh, you know, by looking at the comments, you know, the feedback sheets, I, I realized you guys started thinking about canopy, you know, expanding understanding to canopy. So what neighboring plants affect and what is the radiation inside a canopy in terms of long wave and short wave. So today is, is sort of radiation in the canopy. You're going to learn that um, today. Let me. Right. So, canopy growth and environment, light and CO2 distribution. And then one more canopy talk on Wednesday. And then Monday's actual measurement to understand the canopy microenvironment. So, that's the sort of structure of those two weeks. So um, one reading material, this is actually optional uh, and then exactly the same as the one toward graduate student uh, for the week of light intensity and light quality. So if you are graduate students, you probably read that. But if you're undergraduate student, just you know, go through and find some of the things I covered in the lecture. And then you can selectively read. It, it's, it, it's not a requirement. Um, Canopy, oh, here, 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 here. So plant canopy, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna show you varieties of canopy. So the plant production, again, based on canopy, right? You, you have the same variety, same age of plants growing in, in a specific section. You may have different you know, crops or different uh, varieties or different physiological ages um, or stages of the plants in a large production system if you're a large grower. But most of the cases, if you look individual one, it's very uniform. And then uniformity is very important in a, in a production system like that. By the way, this is a bell pepper or a sweet pepper um, production system in um, Canada, hydroponics. Um, Dr. Aurora Bud's teaching greenhouse has one row. Um, I think it's a east side um, bell pepper, but that could be you know entire. Um, and this is a tomato, which is uh, um, I guess low density than we do, um, so it, it looks uh, kind of thin. Um, you know you can see through. Um, it's also in Canada. Um, this is cucumber in. Um, Cucumber canopy in uh, uh, Wilcox, Arizona. Um, uh, Eurofresh or former company. Now it's Nature Sweet doing a hydroponic cucumber production, and that you know big leaf right hanging, um, and you can see that uh, it's really nicely the um, walkway between the rows, um, and then the the plant height usually what two and a half meter or so. Um, uh, the canopy height. And uh, um, this is, uh, again, the same greenhouse, but tomato production greenhouse. And this is what they are doing um, toward the end of the old crop. So this is what they call interplanting. Um, as you can see, those are the young plants. It's about this height, okay, one meter height. Um, and then the ne neighboring plants are old plants, so it's two at the end of 10 months production cycle. Um, so only a few leaves left on top of the 
top of the canopy so the, the basically the shoot tip um, is removed so that there is no more you know, vertical growth. Yet still hanging fruits like that, therefore minimum leaves left and then waiting for those fruits um, harvestable. And by the time the last fruit cluster becomes harvestable, those young plants down here going to be taller, right? So, so sort of changing, you know, the height, um, and then um, completely replace um, old plants with young plants. So that's interplanting. So that this is a technique in uh, um, uh, uh, greenhouse growers like them. Um, uh, not to, you know, the, the objective of this is uh, 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 eliminate the gap between the old crop production and young plants or new crop production. Because if you clean the greenhouse and then plant the new plants, then you got to have, what, two months or three months at least, right, waiting time um, for the new crop to, to, to be harvestable. So to avoid that, they do this. Yes? Um, but isn't that also bad because uh, the plant, the young plants can get infested with some, some kind of disease? disease? Old, yeah. Cat, yeah. Like yeah. So the indicator is concerned about um, disease management, right? Yes, it is a huge issue. Therefore, they used to be. I don't, I don't know exact the current practice, but long time ago they were doing this continuously, right? Every year they never, they, they never, you know, empty out the greenhouse. Always some plants are sitting. Um, but one time they had issue, so they set the cycle like two crops or three crops, and then completely, you know, clean out and then start over again. But still, you know, better than every single crop they have a gap you know, no production gap. So, so that's, yeah, exactly, good, good question. But anyway, so we are talking about canopy, right? So, so, um, so this is a unique canopy structure because the young plants and old plants and they are managing, you know, the um, open up the space and put the young plants and then old plants having only small leaves, small amount of leaves and then gradually, gradually lower to at the end when, you know, young plants are taking over. So it's very unique management system based on the understanding of light penetration in the canopy. So that's why I wanted to show. This is a floriculture greenhouse. This is an East LED, I bet. And then um, those are much, much shorter and uh, um, sitting on the ground. Um, it's a, a sub-irrigation system, so the ebb and the flood, you know, so the floor irrigation system. So it's not overhead irrigation. But anyway, look at the uniform canopy, right? Those are sitting nicely in, in this greenhouse. This is also Canada, uh, Canadian greenhouse. This is in Holland. This is a, um, this is a chrysanthemum uh, rooted cuttings um, in a soil block. It's a substrate block, I guess. And then um, the height is like that, uh, probably 20 centimeter or so, um, grown in there. In a, in a container uh, designed to be automated. So there is a transporter going in and out, picking up that, you know, um, I don't know, uh, 30, 40 cuttings, rooted cuttings growing, bring it to uh, um, uh, next greenhouse or finishing or transplanting. So it's very much automated system. Courtney. Um, do they mist irrigate? Yeah, I think they are over irrigate, yeah, overhead irrigation. Yeah, Could misting. Yeah, yeah. Did you say that this was Canada or the last one? The last one is Canada. This is this is Holland, Netherlands. What, what plant was in the last one? The last one is uh, I think East Lily. This one is chrysanthemum plants. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So so that's chrysanthemum. Um, uh, cutting or rooted cutting production. This is uh, U.S. I somewhere in Midwest. I, I don't remember so many years ago. But this is a plug um, seedlings, very young, um, high density. So the uh, what we call 10, 20 trays. That's seedling trays, and then maybe 300 
cells, 300 counts, you know, plants growing in that small density. And those plants are grown to maybe first true leaf or second true leaf stage, and then transplanted into a much larger, you know, pot as a starting material. So this is a plug production. Uh, very uniform, but super, super tiny, you know, the canopy or height, okay? Um, and then um, the nursery production, therefore, um, you know, the only the section is, is consisting with the same species varieties. And so that's why the color is different. So totally different, you know, um, species or variety. Uh, this is research greenhouse, Arabidopsis plants growing. Also, this is a, a, a flowering stage, so they are all bolted, you know, the bolting. So the stretched and then flowers on top. It's also creating canopy. Yes? On the last slide, um, do the Oops. pots uh, create shade? Oh, the hanging basket? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. E everything sitting above the plants are creating shadow. So they want to orient this. This is something we talk about greenhouse system, but they want to orient those sh shadow uh, in the direction of north-south rather than east-west. So that you know, shadow moves over the plants when sun moves you know, above the sky. If it is... Um, east-west, then the shadow stays in the same location, no matter what, you know. We can talk about that later. But yeah, so the above, you know, the anything sitting above is, is eliminating um, the PAR, or light intensity, reaching over the plants. So if you have tons of stuff above, that means you have an average reduction, you know, greater than what, what it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's a research canopy, right? So the, the, we are talking about canopy environment, microenvironment. And this is, um, I think this is my research pepper um, canopy in the um, urban, flood, uh, urban flow get benches. So it's, it's a bench system. And then we were growing using rock wall cubes and then just you know, irrigating from the uh, uh, bottom. And it's also very uniform canopy. Right. So I'm going to show you one picture, which is my favorite. This is the same plant canopy, but looking from inside. So it, it's like, you know, you see that the light is penetrating and top of the leaf is receiving the full, you know, full, in, full intensity of light and then going deeper and deeper. So what is the microclimate inside the canopy? So that's what we are talking about. Okay. All right, so how do you, you know, we have seen many, many different canopies, right? And how do we characterize the canopy? And there are multiple ways. Of course, you want to specify name of the crop species or common name, and then maybe variety, maybe the stage, you know. In addition to that, there are more um, uh, quantitative, you know, uh, way to characterize the uh, canopy structure. So typical variables include uh, planting density, how many plants per square meter average. So there's a walkway and, you know, in between the rows usually, but usually you count the space used for walkway, so that's average planting density, okay? And then um, for tomato crop and cucumber, probably three plants per square meter is pretty typical. That is probably much higher, uh, 30, 40 plants per square meter. Um, so depending on the species, depending on the head size of the plants. Uh, uh, seedlings like a plug, probably much, much higher, you know, hundreds of plants per square meter. Um, so that's very different. So that's one way to describe density of the canopy. And then also height. Height is important information. And then another typical variable to describe the canopy is leaf area index, leaf area index. I'm going to explain what it is in the next slide. Um, and then additional variables to um, uh, describe the canopy structure is leaf angle, angle of the leaf, which is difficult to, 
some people do it seriously. I have seen a professor climbing a tree and just measuring you know, <laughs> the angle of the um, leaf. I thought it's, it's a lot of work. It's an ecophysiologist. So anyway, I could do that, you know, <laughs> tomato, <laughs> if I have to. Um, so the leaf angle, and then another one you learn, extinction, in, extinction coefficient. Extinction coefficient. This is a characteristic value of canopy, how light penetrates in the canopy. So that's also very important today. And then other you know, optical properties, reflectance, uh, absorbance, things like that, used as additional variables. But most of the cases, um, the, th the first three variables are very common to describe the canopy structure. OK, so what is leaf area index? So the leaf area index is basically the, um, the value to express the leafiness. How many leaves, how much leaf sitting in that mass of canopy? Um, how do you describe the total leaf area divided by the growing area of the canopy? Um, um, so the total leaf area of the canopy, so that you know every single leaf, you measure the leaf, leaf area somehow sum up, so that's the total leaf. And then divide it by total ground area. So if you have 100 plants, technically, you need to measure all the leaf, all the leaf area, every single leaf, leaf area, and sum up, and divide it by the area. You know, those 100 plants are, are, are standing. But that's pretty much impossible. Therefore, usually, um, what researchers do is sampling base. So 100 plants, and then we're going to sample three or four plants, and then measure the leaf, uh, leaf area of those sampled plants, and then um, assume that you know, we, the sampling or sampled plants are representing the rest of the you know, canopy, and then compute you know, um, how many plants are in that um, uh, growing area, Therefore, um, the number of leaves and amount of leaf area per plant, div uh, amount of leaf area, total amount of leaf area per plant times uh, number of plants in square meter, that would give the leaf area index, basically. But anyway, so, so the equation is right here. Total leaf area of the canopy in square meter and total ground area upon which the canopy stands. Um, uh, also square meter. So square meter by square meter, therefore, it's a dimension, dimensionless value. There's no dimension. So just, you know, I would say my canopy has leaf area index 3.5. That means 3.5 greater leaf area total relative to the growing area. Okay? So that means somewhere a lot of overlapping leaf, right? Leaf area index 1.0, meaning total leaf area is exactly the same as the growing area. So the leaves are receiving pretty much you know, good incident light intensity. OK? Are you with me? OK. All right. Uh, 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 uh. OK. And then very important variable, you can see not just describing what is canopy structure, but we use a lot this value we use a lot for uh, um, modeling, transpiration, um, uh, and then also photosynthesis. And then I show you example. OK, so this is what you saw, um, I think, last week. Um, this is a transmission um, reflectance, transmittance, reflectance, absorptance <laughs> of the single leaf. Okay, typical leaves. So starting from 300 nanometers all the way to, uh, uh, in this case, a little bit beyond 2,500, 2,500 nanometers, right? And then you see that PAR range is very high absorption. Absorptance is very high, little dip in the green, and then very low absorptance in uh, um, uh, far red as well as near infrared range. And this up and down, I think somebody asked in a feedback sheet, what is causing this up and down? So that's, I think it's a component, um, a protein or secondary metabolites, you know, um, those are having specific 
um, absorption, and uh, that is causing that up and down. Um, and then I bet water is also doing that too. But I, um, related topic, so if you know the specific absorptance coming from the specific compounds in the leaf or the fruit or maybe flowers, you can estimate the concentration of whatever the compounds uh, using the absorptance or reflectance. So anyway, so, so that's why, you know, the, the, the compounds in the uh, leaf is affecting this up and down. But anyway, generally speaking, these range starting from 700 all the way to what? Um, close to 2,000, pretty much low absorption. That means more transmission or deflection, right? Okay. All right, so that's the leaf. Um, and then coming back to the um, longer wavelengths, pretty much absorbing high, right? Remember, beyond 3,000, it's a long wave radiation, right? Long wave radiation. Absorption of long wave radiation by the leaf is very high, which is emissivity. Emissivity equal to absorptance. And that is what, 0 0.9 or greater, maybe 0 0.95, 0 0.96, 97. So pretty much long wave radiation all absorbed by the leaf surface. So the only thing they don't absorb is this range, right? Near infrared. Okay? All right. So this is, um, I think some students, uh, undergraduate students did that, but this was the um, part of the question of the first review question, I think, for graduate students. So I gave the data and then students um, develop the chart and then compute the ratio of um, different um, uh, colors of light. So um, this is a, a light scan over the canopy from 300 to uh, close to 900. And um, this is inside the greenhouse, therefore not much UV radiation, okay? So the below 400 is pretty much cut off. Um, and over the canopy, this is, this is a, a distribution. And under the canopy, I believe this is tomato canopy, so, so many leaves. And under the canopy, you see clearly, you know, the, almost all the PAR range, 400 to 700, is absorbed or pretty, pretty well absorbed. So the light intensity is very low. And then uh, you can see that from 400 uh, sorry, 700 and beyond, this is a range, leaves don't have high absorptance. Therefore, either reflected or transmitted through the canopy. Therefore, there is a high amount of photon flux, you know, um, in, in this range, photon flux exists compared to, you know, other wave bands, right? Okay, and then this one is showing the ratio and actual computation. So that this was measured very low light condition, so that's why um, quite low, even above the canopy only 50 micromoles, and then the under the canopy only 3.0, so it's kind of unusual. Uh, but the trend is usually the same. Um, evenly distributed uh, across from blue, green, red, and far red. Blue light is 400 to 500. Uh, green light is 500 to 600, red is seven, hmm? 600 to 700 is the red, and then far red is 700 to 800. So they it's almost evenly distributed um, across. And then um, uh, this is under canopy, and then what you notice is a huge you know, percentage. This is a relative to a PPF, photosynthetic photon flux, so relative to 400 to 700. Okay, so um, just a comparing relative to the PPF level. But uh, as you can see, far red is increased. It's a typical in under canopy light quality. And then slight increase in green range compared to blue or red range. That is coming from this dip, right? Okay. All right, so that's uh, um, top of the canopy, you know, under the canopy comparison. And then the absorptance, reflectance, the optical characteristics, 
um, slightly different for different types of canopy or different plant species. And this is a value extracted from the reading material, Jones. Um, so this is a field crop um, a species as example, as a general or average number. Um, uh, absorption for the shortwave radiation, which is 300 to 3,000, right? is uh, 40 to 60 percent, 40 to 60 percent. And reflectance is about 30 percent. Okay, reflectance is 30 percent. So that means transmittance is about also 30 some percent, right? Because reflectance, absorptance, transmittance equal to 100 percent, right? Um, so slightly different for different, you know, plant species. Um, so this one, typical mean values for short waves. So it's a generalized, you know, you can, you can, uh, you can acquire the general understanding. So the reflectance 30% and absorptance 50% um, uh, for the short wave, including 300 to 3000. But that value is very different, um, much higher absorption for the PAR, PAR range, 400 to 700. So 85% of the PAR is absorbed, and then only 10% or so is reflected or transmitted. Okay? All right. Um, grass, field, crop, forest, so that's also reflectance, slightly different, um, but this is a summary. So the vegetation, um, so those are the single leaf value, and this is a, a vegetation or canopy, so the canopy surface. The short wave reflectance is 20% and the PAR range is very low, uh, 5%, because absorption is huge. Um, and then, of course, cannot be so many layers, so there, there are more chances to get absorbed. That's why those values are small. Um, and then this is just the difference value, snow. Um, uh, absorption, uh, not absorption, reflectance is very, you know, white snow. Um, very high in the short wave radiation range, 300 to 3,000. However, again, long wave radiation, snow surface absorb long wave radiation, 90% or greater. Okay? Sometimes you get confused. Snow is so shiny, so you might think long wave radiation also reflecting over the white surface, but no. Long wave radiation is something you can't see, so reflectance you know, whether it is shiny or not is based on your eye, so it's, it's not representing long wave radiation. Okay? All right. All right, canopy. Oh, okay, so um, in community and canopy, right? So we are talking about today light penetration to start with. Light is coming from top of the canopy and then penetrate inside. The direction should be, you know, depending on the sun angle. But, you know, uh, the good, good, easy example is when it's penetrating straight down, right? Um, so, uh, many weeks ago already, we talked about this, the difference in terms of single leaf photosynthesis and canopy leaf photosynthesis and why canopy leaf doesn't get saturated versus single leaf saturating. And do you remember now? What was the reason? This is a key point. Why single leaf having saturation point? Um, in this case, about 1,000 micromoles per mole, but at the same um, level of intensity, you know, micromoles per mole, the canopy, if you can measure entire canopy photosynthesis, not the single leaf, you don't see saturation, just continuously, linear. What is the reason? Hmm? Anyone? Yeah, so Caitlin is saying the top leaves can absorb, and if just one single leaf, all the lights are absorbed by the 
or there's only so much light absorbed by the single leaf. And then in the case of canopy, there are more leaves, a chance to absorb the light. Yeah, it's, I think it's a halfway. I, I would give 50% point for that. Because uh, um, the reason the single leaf is saturating is not because they are, they are not absorbing, but because they, you know, they are absorbing, but there's another limiting factor there. So therefore, absorbed photons are not contributing to photosynthesis. So absorbance is, is still 90%. Okay, the the single leaf or eighty percent, ninety percent. Okay, but high intensity they absorb, but they can't use all the photons effectively for photosynthesis because something else is limiting. Maybe the you know carbon cycle is not running efficient enough. Therefore, the excess energy is not going to be used, and then so in basically emitted. Um, re-emit it as fluorescence, which is plant physiology stuff, or the heat. So it's not efficient. That's why it's leveling, leveling off. Um, however, okay, um, in canopy, some light still can penetrate deep inside, and those leaves are still um, receiving the light level um, uh, much lower, right? So the increasing further light, you know, doesn't increase the top canopy leaf photosynthesis anymore because something else is limiting on top of the canopy. But below the canopy, they are still, you know, the light is the pretty much the limiting factor. Therefore, the lower leaves can still, you know, drive more photosynthesis. So that as a whole, you see the increase. They are four linear, okay? So that, that's why I said halfway. Um, Okay, so that's the reason. All right, so uh, the difference based uh, on the, uh, uh, basically the vertical profile of the light, so the PA or photosynthetic active radiation deep inside the canopy is much lower than at the canopy surface and do not saturate their uh, PA at lower canopy. So that's the, basically the description, uh, you know, to understand the difference. And, and then this understanding is very important to understand, you know, DRI and da-da-da-da-da, right, in the rest of the night lecture. Okay, so today's lecture, we're going to take a little bit closer look. What is the light distribution inside the canopy, all right? So light, it pen, light is penetrating, so that the intensity is highest on top of the canopy. This is called incident light intensity, the, the, the very high light intensity on top of the canopy. And then gradually, gradually decline because a little bit by little bit, or most of that first, you know, absorbed by the tops, top layer of the leaves, and then gradually, gradually decline. Um, so because leaf angles different, right? And then size of the leaf, distribution of the leaves, if you if you look at the canopy, you know, there's an aisle and, you know, it's, it's not completely uniform. But to understand something, simplification is a very effective approach. So we're going to assume, to understand the canopy light penetration, we're going to assume the distribution of leaves and everything are very uniform. You know, it's a small scale, maybe not, but the large scale, you know, you can average out, right? So you can almost assume that my canopy has a very uniform um, leaf distribution, okay? So that's, that's the way we approach. Um, um, oh, uh, okay, so before going that, okay, so yeah, yeah, so that's the way we, we approach. Um, so simplification is, you know, they're based on very uniform horizontal layer. But the actual um, distribution is shown in the previous slides. Um, I hope this doesn't confuse you. But this one is actual data um, uh, using uh, single point sensors in the canopy. Uh, so this is a, a, a cucumber canopy. Um, so two rows in here, two rows in here, relatively small greenhouse and then put the sensor at four different levels, single point measurement. So if you look at the, um, 
distribution of the light intensity over time, you know, over the uh, 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 daytime, um, the relationship between, this is, I think, outside of the greenhouse, so the number five um, sensor, and then this is the top of the canopy, and the uh, um, second highest in the canopy, the third one, and fourth. So the relationship is very different because sometimes, you know, the neighboring leaves, depending on the angle of the, the sun, shading the sensor. So, it's, so, so depending on, you know, just a single sensor measurement is very challenging to describe what is the canopy light penetration. So when you quantify the light intensity vertical um, profile of the light intensity in the canopy, you never use single sensor, you know, the point sensor, like light sensor we, we tested some time ago. So what you do is a nine sensor. It's basically the similar approach. You know, you assume that you have a bunch of different leaves and point measurement cannot really represent because it's so much affected. Sensor size is so small compared to the leaf size. So you want to have much bigger sensor to average the light, you know, um, amount of light going into the canopy. So this is a typical one meter length line sensor, which we will be using next week together, right? And then basically, you know, um, get the, some idea of average light intensity vertical way. Then you get much better understanding, you know, without much noise coming from neighboring leaves or, you know, the sensor happened to be covered with the the, the leaf. So anyway, so simplification is the, the effective way to understand. And then using mathematical equation is powerful way to understand. And um, this is similar equation you might see in the chemistry um, uh, course. Uh, um, Lambert beer law, um, which is basically showing the, you know, so the light is coming through the media, very uniform, you know, and then the light intensity changes as the light penetrates through the uniform, uh, uh, homogeneous media, okay, medium. And so the equation is, so the whatever the light intensity at the depths of x meter, okay, whatever the depths x, is expressed with incident light intensity, I sub zero, so which is the first, you know, the top of the canopy. I sub zero, exponent of negative uh, kx, and x is the depth. So the negatively, uh, negative exponent, so that means um, the light intensity decline exponentially, okay, as go into the canopy. Top of the canopy, distance and then you know away from the top then you get much lower and lower 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 light intensity so that's the e equation is showing okay it's not too difficult right and then k what is k k is what we call extinction coefficient extinction coefficient so that is basically showing how fast the light intensity declines in the canopy if it is dense canopy, you get quick decline of the light intensity. If it is, you know, not dense, um, you know, the, it's very open canopy, then light intensity doesn't decline so fast, right? So the, the playing with K value, you can express, you know, different canopy light penetration. So that is the light intensity, assuming that the same light intensity at the incident level, and then when K value is large, then you have quick decline relative to depths from the top. And then if K value is small, it's slow decline. Okay, slow decline. All right. And then remember those, for example, this graph, if you get this graph in your canopy, what you can find is, okay, so my light intensity incident light intensity today is 500 micromoles, which is cloudy, rainy day. So in my canopy, if I know the K value, right? And so two meters down, when fruits are, you know, ripening, my light intensity is 50 micromoles because K is this value. So you plug in the K, you plug in the, um, uh, the depths, 
And then you can estimate what would be the lower canopy light level as long as you have this k value and equation. Okay? So you do a uh, pruning, right? Um, those who work in greenhouse, tomato greenhouse, weekly pruning is a lot of work. Um, so describe anyone, can you describe what is leaf pruning and how you do that and what is the decision making, you know, this leaf to be removed or that leaf, leaf to, be, to be kept? Anyone? Volunteers? Yeah, suckers are going to be removed and everything else is kept? Really? So at the end you get, at the end you get so many leaves. Yeah, bottom. And how do you decide which which leaf to remove? Oh, so relative to the height. Mm -hmm. So so here, okay. So it's about you know we did that too, to be honest. When we did the tomato experiment, basically you know whatever um, the height difference height we removed there. But we could apply a little bit more scientific way, don't you think? If we know the light intensity potentially, if we know the K value of the crop, and then if we know the likelihood to get above compensation point in that lower leaves, we can actually decide, okay, instead of, you know, one meter height, I think we should leave, you know, like, one more leaf or one more less because light intensity unlikely to support that leaf photosynthesis. Nobody does that. i never seen anyone doing scientific way. But that's why, you know, the, um, this kind of approach is very effective. Um, and, but because of the instrumentation, K, but finding K value is a lot of work. But we do next week. That's what we do next week. Okay? Yes, TJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you count the leaves and then prune, right? So, so that's TJ said that. You know, count the number of leaves and decide. But that number of leaves also, um, you know, you, basically the height, so the, the distant internal length is the same. So the number of leaves you can um, translate as the, the depth yeah. from the top. Yeah. Okay? So the same thing. Same thing, right? Okay, uh, and so, um, yeah, so I think it's a good, actually, a good question, TJ. Um, so the depth is not really um, the real representative value, right? Depending on how, you know, how many leaves are there, whether Saka is there, or um, the internal length, um, so it's, it's really not the depths determining the penetration, it's actually the leaves, that's why uh, you, you wanted to say number of leaves, leaves existing in the canopy. So we usually convert this equation, um, I sub x equal I zero E minus K X, um, into the equation having leaf related variable as independent variable instead of depths, and that's the leaf area index. So leaf area index, but counting from the top. So leaf area index uh, uh, um, is total leaf area divided by the growing um, uh, floor space. But you can actually see the leaf area index of top of the canopy, so the top layer of the canopy, and, and then, you know, you can, you can see the um, increase of leaf area index by increasing the observation depths. Um, so this is a leaf distribution of, of the um, tomato plant. Um, my graduate students got that um, in one of the research greenhouse. So the top of the leaf, second, third, fourth, and then this is a leaf area of individual leaves. Um, so the, 
the top leaf area index is what? So this is um, 200 square centimeter divided by growing area. So it's very, very small leaf area index. And then as you can go deeper and deeper, you can see leaf area index can be, you know, getting higher and higher and higher, right? Top zero leaf area index because no leaf to that level. And then, so no leaf in that level. So leaf area index at this level is zero. But if you go deeper and deeper, so, you know, many more leaves are going to be counted. So they're increasing leaf area index because the number of leaves to be included to, you know, consider the total leaf area to that particular level, for example, this level, um, 60 centimeter or 70 centimeter, let's say 70 centimeter depth, the leaf area index, you are going to sum up all the leaves, leaf area up to 70 centimeter divided by whatever the growing area, and that is the leaf area index at that point. If you go much deeper, 150, then you have to sum up all the leaf areas of those divided by the same growing area, right? So that's why I'm saying leaf area index goes um, uh, higher when you go deeper and deeper in the canopy. So instead of using depths, you can use leaf area index as independent variable. So now the equation is, this was x before, this was x. So the now the equation is the equation of leaf area index. So the um, whatever the level um, at given leaf area index, then um, the um, light intensity can be expressed using the incident light intensity and the extinction coefficient k value and leaf area index. Okay, all right. Um, this is. So just this is the same thing, just showing leaf area index instead of depths, okay? So therefore, larger K, quicker, you know, um, a decline of light intensity, smaller K, slower. Yes? Oh, why it is de declining like this? Yeah. That's the question. I don't know. Maybe this is probably shadow, or, or then just you know, far ahead and stretch or something. Um, so it's it's very random. Um, it's not always always exactly the same size leaf is. Um, yeah, but you can think of you know, it's not always seventy centimeter height higher, and then if you look at the next neighboring plants, the distribution is slightly different. But always, you know, the, the tendency is, of course, the smallest, you know, the growing leaves, smallest um, leaf area, and then growing in certain size. But there is a distribution, some variation, you know, in that lower canopy. But you have uh, so many plants, therefore, um, to, for the purpose of simplification, we can assume that distributing almost at the, at the given horizontal plane, the distribution of leaves is uniform. It's a very big assumption, but it helps a lot to understand canopy behavior. All right, so the leaf area index. Um, so this is, I know it's a lot of writing. So the, the y leaf area index um, to be used as independent variable, so the y axis, no, x axis as an independent variable. By doing that, ba basically you can normalize the response. Because the distance, again, as I said, how many leaves are there, what kind of species, right? And it it's depends. Um, so it's, it's difficult to, unless you are sticking with the same canopy again and again and evaluate without changing, you know, uh, your assumption. Um, but by using leaf area the index, now you can compare this crop in this condition and totally different um, condition, same, maybe same crop, tomato, but totally different.
condition, and then see the k value because it's normalized. Um, k is extinction coefficient. So the k value is now affected not by the leaves per se, because the, the leaf area index is already the variable. So the k is a parameter, and that is more representing, for example, light quality or angle of the leaves. You know, the same leaf area, but if the angle is different, um, then the light penetration is very different. So the k value is more characteristic values, um, not including the, the leaf area per se. Okay? Are you okay? Sometimes it's difficult. This part is, I know, this is a little challenging concept. Um, are we, for, so for uh, variable L, is that the leaf area index mm -hmm. at a given height? Of That's plant? right. That's right. Okay. So at if you're going to do the whole, the entire plant leaf area index. That's that a maximum. Be, yeah. Would that be to the bottom of the canopy? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's the given height. Yes. Um, and uh, the k value is reported between 0.3 and 1.5, blah, blah, blah. And then there are a whole bunch of equations to estimate k value depending on the shape of the leaves. That's a little too much for, for me and you guys, too. So, um, okay, so this one is probably um, easier to understand uh, how k value is affected by light quality. Okay, so this is the same canopy, um, and just created the relative light intensity, so the 100%, um, so, so the top of the canopy, and then the x-axis, the leaf area index at that height, okay? So the going x-axis from left to right, meaning going deeper and deeper in the canopy, okay? Um, PAR, if you just measure the PAR, photosynthetic active radiation, um, this is the degra degradation, you know, the, the decline of the light intensity. So the 100% when you measure top of the canopy, and then when you go leaf area index 1, it's about 60%. Leaf area index 2, so the level giving a leaf in area index 2, it's about 40% of the incident light. That's PAR. Um, compared to PAR, infrared, IR, infrared radiation, that has much slower decline, right? K value is smaller, therefore um, the speed of decline in light intensity is slower k value is small because infrared doesn't get absorbed, okay? Near infrared, though, we are talking about. Not the long wave, okay? It's a 300, 3000 short wave radiation, so we are talking about 700 to 300, I mean, 700 to 3000 range. So remember the big gap? Not absorbing, therefore, you have a lot of infrared, or far red or infrared, whatever, that range, okay? Net radiation in between. Um, um, so basically, if you can compute a K value, um, you, you see the higher K value for PAR, uh, lowest K value for uh, near infrared, and it is showing that K value can represent the light quality influence in the canopy light intensity distribution. Okay, and then right hand side is just showing if you look, if you use the log, in this case common log, I think what whatever they're using, it's it's a linear linear. So so using this um, relationship you can actually uh, using Excel file or uh, using simple math you can compute K value because it's a linear slope and then find the K. So we Hopefully we can do that on Monday. It's a little bit, you know, um, advanced level to find out the K value. And that's going deeper into the canopy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I want to introduce something really interesting. I hope you get excited to hear that too. Um, when I read this paper, I thought, wow, man, this is really, really cool. Um, so 
tomato production many years ago, um, 30 years ago in Holland, the yield was, average yield in Holland, in greenhouse, was 30 kilos per square meter. 30 kilos per square meter. And nowadays, they are getting average 60 kilos per square meter. Uh, that's a sort of, what, um, 10 months production or nine months production, long-term production. Both are, you know, like that. Um, and uh, we thought, you know, the technology is improved, right? We had much better technology, much better greenhouse. So this guy, um, uh, Higashide, um, which I know very well, Higashide-san, um, and then uh, um, Eb Hubering, who is a really smart um, plant physiologist in, 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 in Netherlands, Wageningen University, did this study and got all the varieties released over the time of 25 years and then grown in the same condition, okay? And then map the yield. I think they only grow short period of time, four months or five months. So it's not 30, 60 kilo story, but um, much, much, you know, like eight and 10 type of yield. But you can still see that trend. See, the yield is increasing. Um, so the earliest uh, or the oldest um, the variety, which is money, make, money maker, it's only producing five kilos per square meter. But more recent varieties, uh, Dutch varieties, producing eight kilos per square meter. So genetically, basically improved. Okay, genetically improved over time. And by the way, Higashide-san couldn't help adding Japanese variety because Japanese variety is known to be very low. It's almost like an heirloom. High flavor, but super low productivity. So that's why he put, you know, he just put that in a, um, so I, I just smiled because <laughs> I can see why he wanted to do. But anyway, so, so the equation or the, the regression doesn't include Japanese variety, but it has a very highly significant linear um, equation. So if you are ordinary plant scientist, or if you are just um, plant breeder, you just conclude this is a contribution of breeding. And here, you know, this is evidence increasing yield because of the breeding effort. And if you are an engineer, you want to show, you know, um, no, this is a, you know, sort of system, da 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 da, greenhouse. Um, they have a background of ecophysiology, so they analyze the canopy. You know, what's the light penetration? What's the canopy structure? So that what they did was finding K value of, you know, so that the 10 varieties or nine varieties grown, not individually, but in sections. So they can do the analysis, like penetration analysis. So here's what they found. So the K value of the old varieties is much higher than more recent variety. K value is um, lower, okay? Remember K value? If K value is low, that means the um, decline of the light intensity in the canopy is slower. So at the same height, if you look at the same height, low K value meaning high potential light intensity inside the canopy compared to high K value. All right, so the canopy structure is much better so the entire leaves in the canopy can receive higher level of light for the um, varieties released more recently. Long time ago, top of the canopy was basically consuming all the light and then saturated and not much penetrating inside, right? But the more recent varieties, most likely unintentionally breeders selected, right? I don't think breeders measure light penetration and K value and <laughs> screen the plants based on that. But, you know, they are looking at you, they were looking at the whole uh, performance of the plants, and then unintentionally selected, but it seems like the K value was very significant characteristic value to increase the productivity. So that was quite interesting um, paper. Okay? All right. So anyway, so that's how you use. And then also another, if you are an engineer, um, 
K value is used for uh, canopy photosynthetic modeling. Um, um, so this is a Monshi Saeki, which is very old, 1950s. Um, the original paper is in, 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 in German um, uh, language. And, uh, but there is a translation available too. But anyway, so he was using um, K value, canopy structure, because to model the canopy photosynthesis, um, you can start with single leaf, you know, response, which is expressed with maximum photosynthetic rate. Remember, maximum photosynthetic rate. Um, this is this is a, a compensation point if you want to use, or the um, quantum efficiency, the initial slope of the efficiency of the photosynthesis, um, and then respiration, which is y intercept. Okay, respiration rate. When light is zero, there is a respiration. Okay, so the respiration rate, P max, and then quantum efficiency, those three values Monshi Saiki used to express the canopy photosynthetic model. Um, and then also he used K value to express the canopy structure like penetration because if you know K and it, 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 uh, 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 leaf area index, then you can estimate the, you know, the every layer is light intensity. So the potential photosynthetic curve going in the every layer. So he did this model, look at that. So the photosynthesis of the canopy expressed using all these variables, Pmax, um, extinction coefficient, um, uh, uh, the quantum efficiency, and the incident light intensity and the area index and respiration rate. And then once you get this equation, right, then you can play with how the area index affect the canopy photosynthesis. And this is the one I showed uh, one of the lectures earlier, how the area index affect, which I created using the exact the same equation I showed in the previous slide. So you can see that you know the low density canopy. It's almost like behave like a single leaf, but high density canopy, which is a leaf area index 6.0, um, you see um, you see very linear response. And you can also play with k value too. You know, change the k, right? So so or the p max original p max. So, so if you know. It's easy to measure leaf area. Uh, easy to measure single leaf photosynthesis. There is a there is a tool, and once you know that, then you can actually expand the understanding to canopy and see how canopy respond. Okay, um, so that's the light intensity uh, or different light radiation um, uh, vertical profile in the canopy. And this is actually the driving force of other microclimate, right? The light um, drives photosynthesis, therefore affecting CO2, da 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 da, da. And now I'm going to see the CO2 profile in the canopy, OK? So this one is um, old data. Um, this is the same guy um, we, we um, cited for the uh, boundary layer of the plants. Yabuki. Um, uh, but this is a field measurement. Um, uh, this is a tobacco field. So the tobacco is like what? It's again, um, maybe vegetative stage, one meter high or a little bit higher. Um, oh, in here. The, in this particular one is 80 centimeters. So a little bit less than one meter canopy. And then this is showing vertical profile of CO2 concentration in the canopy. Okay, and then different time um, of the day. Uh, here at midnight and 6.30 a.m., 10.45 a.m., 11, 2.30 p.m., 9.55 p.m. So, so um, let's look at the midnight as an example to understand first, right? So what it is, this graph. So this is a height, right? So this is a canopy level. And uh, midnight, the highest, uh, or the, actually the lowest CO2 concentration was the highest point. And then just increasing as it getting closer to the soil surface, okay? Right above the soil surface, CO2 concentration was a little bit higher than 500 
parts per million, micromole per mole. Why this profile happens? Why so high above the soil? What can you think of? Soils have a higher CO2 concentration than atmosphere. Yeah, um, higher CO2 concentration in the soil than atmosphere. Why? What is generating CO2 in there? Microbial. microbial, yeah, microbial growth, and then also roots and all kinds of things, right? Therefore, soil surface was high. Okay, let's look at the um, midday or close to midday. Those three are pretty much similar uh, profile. So you see um, the CO2 concentration actually start declining inside the canopy, slightly declining inside the canopy, and then shh, increase toward the surface. And why there is a dip like this? This is more typical here. So this profile is also affected by wind and everything, particularly this is open field. Um, when wind is not um, uh, so strong, then you probably see very clear trend. Um, but during the daytime, it seems like you know the inside canopy is the lowest CO2 concentration compared to above the canopy, and why? Why the CO2 concentration inside the canopy is lower than outside, above the canopy? Caitlin. Because the plants are absorbing CO2, and if it's actually inside the canopy, assuming that it's drawn outside on a boundary layer, then the plants are actually blocking the wind and being able to infiltrate through, so it's not replenishing as much, but then the, the plants themselves are yeah, so plants are absorbing CO2 by the leaves. I mean, the leaves are absorbing CO2 in the canopy, and then supply rate, you know, which is probably affected by wind, is not enough. Therefore, CO2 is depleting inside the canopy. So that's see. So the and then also um, the reason why um, we have um, lower um, CO2 concentration during the day than um, other time of the day uh, or the night is because light is penetrating inside the canopy. So the light is the driving of lowering the CO2 inside the canopy also, okay, because photosynthesizing. Okay, this one is quite unique. Um, so this is a grape vineyard. Um, uh, Trellis is, is horizontal. Um, some countries do this. I think it's usually you do vertical way, right? Trellis for vineyard. But um, Japan typically uh, for a fresh consumption grape, not the uh, wine grape, they, they, they do a, a horizontal trellis. So there's a canopy, this much of canopy, uh, maybe two meter height. Um, and then you can see that it's nice trend. So the above the canopy, the CO2 was 300. Uh, parts per million or uh, so, and then shh, decline because of the photosynthesis going on, and then come back, and then again, the soil surface is high. Okay, so that there's a vertical profile of CO2 because of the photosynthesis, and then this profile should be affected by the light intensity inside the canopy also, right? Because every single layer is doing photosynthesis. Um, 